Cells are the basic functional units of all living things, and cells are what actually make use of the atoms and ions and molecules that we learned about in the last chapter. Now, cells come in a variety of shapes and sizes. There are many different types of cells, and there are many different functions for cells. Um, so where we're going to start is with sort of a typical animal cell, like we would find in people. So a typical animal cell has three major components, three major parts to its cell body. It has a cell membrane, and that cell, cell membrane um, helps to separate the cell's contents from the environment. It's also selectively permeable. We'll be talking about that more in just a minute. Um, this, this plasma membrane helps to give form to the cell. Um, and then if we look internally, Inside, there are all sorts of things floating in sort of a liquidy environment. This is called cytoplasm, and there are organelles that hang out in the cytoplasm. We'll be reviewing each of these organelles that are listed um, in more detail in this video and the next. And then the third major component is the nucleus. The nucleus is here in the center of the cell. The nucleus is what houses the DNA. And that DNA directs all of the, pretty much all of the cell's activities. So let's go ahead and start from the outside. We'll work our way inwards. We're gonna start out here with the plasma membrane. The plasma membrane has what's called a fluid mosaic structure. And the reason that it's called a fluid mosaic, mosaic because it has multiple things present, and then fluid because those things are able to slide past each other, they can move around. The primary component of the plasma mem membrane is a phospholipid bilayer. So in orange or peach, all of these uh, little peachy colored molecules, these are phospholipids. And there are two layers of phospholipids. So where my laser pointer is right now, these are the phosphate head groups. Um, and then there are tails that point downwards. And then if I switch down to this side, here's another layer of phospholipid, uh, phosphate head groups, and then uh, hydrophobic tails pointing upwards. And so they form this sort of mesh. So we've got these two layers, and the hydrophobic regions are isolated inside, hydrophilic polar head groups are on the outsides. And that fits with the fact that cells hang out in aqueous conditions. So these polar head groups are exposed to the water, and then the hydrophobic tails are sort of isolated and protected from the water inside. Okay, so this, this uh, phospholipid bilayer, this really helps to prevent movement of things across the plasma membrane. It doesn't let polar molecules through like water, uh, doesn't let ions through, so that the, um, the chemical structure is very conducive to preventing movement across the plasma membrane. In addition to the phospholipid bilayer, there are things embedded in the bilayer. There are a lot of proteins. The proteins are shown in purple in the schematic, and proteins can do a lot of different things. Some of them are there to give structural support. Others are there to allow transport. Some of these proteins might actually have channels that run down the middle, and those channels could allow certain ions to move through in special conditions. Um, others, might actually be enzymes that hang out in the plasma membrane and facilitate chemical reactions. And then finally, these last two, we'll be getting into these in more details, some of the proteins could act as receptors. They could be there um, in order to detect things that are present perhaps in the blood. They could be receptors for hormones. Um, and then they could also be acting as just markers for the immune system. So when an immune cell comes over and surveys this plasma membrane, it's gonna check it out. It's gonna check, does this look like a cell that's supposed to be here? Or does it look like it has foreign molecules on its surface? Um, so there's a interaction that has to take place between different cell types. Proteins can be one of two types. They could be either integral or peripheral, these words right here. What this is referring to is whether the protein spans the entire membrane. An integral protein goes all the way from one side of the plasma membrane up to the other. It's integral, whereas peripheral proteins, they don't necessarily span the whole, uh, whole way across, rather, um, let's look at this one right here. This one sticks out on one side of the plasma membrane, but not on the other. And here's another peripheral membrane protein. Um, it's embedded in one half, but, but it doesn't span the entire way across. We also have carbohydrates present in the plasma membrane. 
And these carbohydrates could be attached to proteins. So right here we've got in green, this is showing carbohydrate. And remember, if you have carbohydrate attached to protein, there's a name for that. That's called a glycoprotein. We're gonna be um, dealing with a number of glycoproteins as we go forward this semester. We could also have glycolipids, so carbohydrate that's attached to lipid instead. And those can um, also help to help to uh, allow the cell to interface with other cells that come along. They could act as regulatory molecules. We'll be seeing more of that as we go forward. Finally, one last major component for the plasma membrane. Uh, there is cholesterol. Cholesterol is shown in yellow. And cholesterol is there to help um, make this membrane a little bit rigid. It helps to give the proper level of flexibility. So we don't want this to be too fluid, otherwise the cell might rip apart accidentally. Uh, we don't want it to be too rigid, too stiff, or it's not going to be able to, to flex enough to allow the cell to, to live. Um, so kind of we need the intermediate level of flexibility and cholesterol, the amount of cholesterol is what helps to mediate that.